Hello everyone and welcome to another development update for Shadow Heroes Vengeance in Flames where you get the behind the scenes access to all the things we are currently working on on the game. Yesterday we worked on a bunch of different things like usual. We worked on getting the skeletons for the different menus up that we are going to be putting into the alpha. So we have our main menu set up. We, are going to, we need to add the login information still but it's going to be there. Uh, we need, uh, we've also set up a basic menu for the campaign that's kind of just a placeholder for now and we also set up the preliminary main uh, the preliminary menu for the multiplayer so it's kind of just a screen that has a couple buttons on it right now there's nothing exciting going on at all it's just regular buttons everywhere but the big step forward that it is is that everything is navigating from where it's supposed to be to where it's supposed to go so everything is kind of working out the way that it's supposed to uh, on top of that, we also got more icons in for the various catalysts that are going to be going into the game. So for anybody who doesn't know how the item system works, uh, a catalyst is an item that is used to combine two other items. So you can take uh, a level zero sword and a second level zero sword, combine them with a low grade catalyst, and it will make a level one sword, or have a chance to anyway. So everything uh, those catalyst icons are kind of coming in slowly and uh, we're getting more and more of them so we're having three different tiers of catalysts and each catalyst kind of has a little bit of a, a backstory to it or not really a backstory but uh, a reasoning behind it so uh, there are three different grades of catalysts and among those three different grades of catalysts we have three different categories of catalysts uh, how we're going to kind of use these is not really known right now we're kind of playing with the idea of having different catalysts do different things, have different chances and combination rates with different items. So you can use, uh, well I guess I should tell you exactly what's going on uh, before I go in and try to explain how we're going to use it. So the three different grades of, cat uh, grades of cat catalyst yeah, are low, medium, and high, you know, basics. Uh, so you can have a low grade catalyst, a medium grade catalyst, and a high grade catalyst. Uh, and amongst each one of those, there's three categories. So there's physical catalysts. Uh, these are going to be things like whetstones. Uh, there are going to be emotional catalysts. These are going to be things like uh, pressed wildflowers. Uh, that's, that's the example of the low-grade emotional catalyst. And then there's going to be uh, magical catalysts, which is going to be something like a mana patch, which I believe is the medium-grade magical catalyst. Uh, and everything's going to kind of flow together. So one idea that we had was to have uh, things like swords and hammers, that type of thing, anything that's kind of physical, doesn't have any uh, magical or emotional things to it, uh, or properties to it really, uh, they're all going to be having better success chances with the physical catalyst than they would with the emotional or with the uh, magical. Uh, but we're not sure if we really are going to implement it that way. But the option is there. It's kind of one of those things where, okay, well, what's going to work out the best? We don't want people hunting for different items for different reasons. Uh, but it's, it's definitely something that we could do. It's up to you guys if we really want to implement it that way. Or just have them be different catalysts so you have lots of pretty items that you can play around with. So that's another thing that we were working on as well. And, uh, and then me, I worked on creating uh, some updated particle effects as well as uh, another effect for the martyr. So the radiant light that we used before, let me jump over into Unreal Engine. So uh, this is the radiant light that we were using before. If you saw any of our previous videos where the Archangel used her special ability, I believe that was like one of our very first promo ones that was on our first Kickstarter. but. Uh, for this, this is what we used before. And it's actually, let me bring that up so you can actually see it more. This is actually pretty expensive. If I go over into particle memory, uh, this is 19 kilobytes for this template. So you're always gonna have that loaded if you're gonna use it in your level. And then every time that you use it, it stores another, well, it was, it says 20 now, but it should be another 56 kilobytes that are 58 kilobytes that is loaded into memory used and then dismissed. So 58 kilobytes is actually a lot of information for a particle effect. So we wanted to get something better. So instead of that, we're now using this one. 
which is actually 12 kilobytes, and then it should be 15. There you go, 15 kilobytes. Now this one is the new Radiant Light. It's a lot faster. Uh, it's lower memory cost, and it has fewer particles on the screen as a whole, and it looks like it has a lot more impact to it. It's a lot brighter, really lights up the scene around it. It's called Radiant Light, so why not have it light up the scene around it? Uh, and yeah, so this is the new Radiant Light particle effect that we're having. Uh, it looks good inside of the level. We played around with having some other stuff going on as well. Uh, I wanted to have it come in from an angle or a variety, but I want to show you this because it's kind of funny. Uh, if I set up the distribution to be kind of a constant curve, which means I can have, or not a constant curve, a distribution vector uniform, I can have min and max areas. So if I go like a maximum of 500, 5,000, and like that, we get the beam coming from all kinds of different areas. It kind of looks like a disco show, which is hilarious for me anyway. Uh, but it's, it's great. <laughs> so this is the type of thing that we were playing around with and thought it was funny. So I wanted to show you guys. Get ourselves a little disco ball thing going on here. But yeah, it's going to actually be 9,000 up. So it's going to look more like this, which is great. Uh, so on top of that, this is also well, this is going to be the radiant light effect that the archangel uses uh, for her area of effect special ability. Uh, on top of that, we also worked on the martyrs. So that's going to be the oh no, that's marked for death uh, martyr material ring. So the martyrs material ring is going to be a decal, which is going to look something like this. So when the martyr actually dies, this is the effect that is going to show up. And it's actually looking very dark right now. All right, but this is kind of the basic idea. And what it should be doing is glowing. I think it's actually the lighting inside of the scene that is kind of killing it right now because this is just the default scene. It doesn't have a proper lighting setup. So let me jump over into our Soren Pendar caves and you can see it there as well. I don't care about saving that. And this should all work out very nice and easy. So there you go, that's kind of closer to the idea of what it would actually look like in our proper lighting setups. Uh, so what would usually happen is you would get two of these. So the 128 one, which is this, is something that would go around an individual unit, while uh, this is something that would go around the martyr itself. So that's kind of the range. If the martyr dies here, you'll get ones that look like this around all of the units that are kind of surrounding them. Which would be you know, great, fine, dandy, spectacular. And everybody, everybody gets happy that way. So let me grab a unit real quick to give you kind of an idea of how that works. So I guess Martyr doesn't really work for it. She'd be dead. Let's grab an Exorcist real quick. I think I have the blueprint somewhere. Oh, up here. So just to show you, give you a bit of scaling that's kind of the idea of what it would actually look like around the unit. So it's very easy to see where that unit is, what they're looking like, and that they have this buff on them. And it's just This is kind of an example of the light it up. So the idea is that even if your unit dies like over here, you'd get that buff. All right, so that's kind of the area of effect. So if the Martyr, whenever the martyr dies, the units around them get a stat bonus for a short period of time that is going to increase their damage, increase their attack speed, uh, all kinds of fun things like that. So your martyr is kind of set to go out onto the field and die, but that makes all the units around her when she dies stronger, which is great. Uh, kind of, kind of the use of a martyr is to go out and die, which is kind of morbid, really, but. At least it serves a purpose. So these are some of the things that we've been working on yesterday. 
uh, and yeah, it's all all this was just yesterday, but uh, this is what we were working on. We'll have more stuff for you tomorrow, and until next time, uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Take care.